Thanks very much, Alan. And um, God, I'm, I'm almost traumatised with all the instructions, to be honest with you, Mother of God. That times were simpler back in the day when we just had things in person. But look, it's great to be back. It's great to have people here today after kind of a, a far a few years. And it's also great to be able to facilitate people who want to join us online as well. So uh, it's, uh, th things have changed and certainly we've learned over the last couple of years. Um, and for the EPA, Alan was saying, three diverse organisations coming together. This conference is really important uh, to us. Um, and I think it's really important as well that three diverse organisations, all with slightly different or very different remits, come together and find an area of common, uh, common interest that we can, uh, I suppose, drive messages together as kind of overall public sector. And um, I'm also really, before I kind of start off, to, to, to thank everybody who's speaking here today and giving so generously of their time. I know it's a really, really busy time of the year for people, so it is much appreciated uh, that people have taken the time out of their schedule to talk to us. And moving then on with regard to, I suppose, from the EPA perspective, um, our vision for Ireland is that we live sustainably in a healthy environment that is protected and valued by all. And I'll underline the word healthy because we very deliberately have put that in, recognising that interconnection between health and the environment. It isn't just the environment for the environment's sake, it's the environment is so interconnected with our health and well-being, both our physical and our mental health. And we, we from, from, again, from our perspective, the environment not only has a, an intrinsic value in its own right, but it's really key to uh, healthy lives, our nat nat national competitiveness, and successful businesses. And overall, it is a key strategic asset for the country. And for our environment to be both valued and protected, uh, there's multiple challenges that need to be addressed. And the theme today for the conference is managing risks in a changing environment. Um, and in addressing these risks, we need to look at how evolving challenges are connected so that our actions can lead to co-benefits. And when we think of a changing environment, uh, most of us will immediately think of climate change. Um, it is the defining challenge um, of the century. It's the defining challenge that we face. And as we're meeting today, of course, COP27 in Egypt is happening. And it is great to see such a level of attention of the world's media on the climate challenge and what's happening at COP. The risk, of course, always is that the, uh, the COP finishes and that all the attention moves on. And that's something that I think it's, it's within all of our roles to make sure that climate change, the challenges of climate change, stay in people's minds all year round um, and not only just during the COPs. And we are seeing climate, you know, and again, when we're talking about climate change, and again, over the last number of days, we, there's a lot of talk about loss and damage. There's a, a lot of talk about the impact of climate change, particularly on poor and developing countries, which absolutely has to be addressed. But sometimes when we think about climate change, it's this issue that's going to happen sometime into the future to people far away. And it's not. It's happening here. Uh, Ireland is being impacted in climate change. We're seeing increases in temperature, changes in precipitation pattern, ongoing sea level rise, and changes in the character of the weather extremes. Uh, you don't have to look further back than Europe this summer and looking at the extreme temperatures that were reached. And in fact, even in Ireland, we had the hottest day recorded in 135 years back in July. And looking just now and over the last couple of weeks and the temperatures across Europe, you're seeing 30 degrees uh, in November. It's just unheard of. So climate change is happening. It's happening now and it is happening to ourselves. And while no individual weather event is evident of climate change, the overall pattern is absolutely clear. And when you look again what's happening in Ireland and the EPA's role, uh, we've seen greenhouse gas emissions increase in 2021, uh, so going up rather than going down. And some of these emissions increases were partly due to the lifting of COVID restrictions. Uh, but when you look at our emissions versus the pre-COVID levels, we're still at a higher level than pre-COVID. So the emissions trajectory is absolutely on the wrong uh, track. 
and we're not on the pathway to uh, deliver on our ambition and commitments. We also, of course, because we look backwards, but we also look forwards. Uh, so uh, looking forwards and trying to project what's going to happen into the future, we published our, uh, our greenhouse gas projections in May of this year. And what that found is with all the current climate policies and plans, uh, if they're all delivered and they all uh, deliver as anticipated, uh, emission reductions in Ireland will be 28% by 2030, which is a long way off the 51% emissions target. So we need urgent implementation of all climate plans and policies, plus further new measures if we are going to meet the target that we have set ourselves of 51%. And I suppose it was heartening to hear the Taoiseach speaking in Egypt the other day and talking that the public will get very cynical if actions uh, aren't delivered, if aspiration doesn't turn into reality. And that really is the situation we're in now. Something the EPA has called upon for a long time, saying that we need to translate plans and programmes into actions on the ground. And that is absolutely essential now. However, climate change is not the only change in our environment, and we need to make sure that when we all are talking about climate change, we don't neglect the other risks and challenges to our environment and our health. And we do a lot of reports towards the end of the year, so just the other week we published our water quality report, um, and this is covering the period up to the end of 2021. And in summary, what that showed was that just over half of our rivers, lakes, estuaries and coastal waters are in satisfactory condition and overall ecological health of the, the waters is declining over the period up to 2021. So again, you're seeing the trajectory going in the wrong direction. Um, and so when we say 50% are in good condition, that means 50% or just under 50% are not in good condition. And for all our talk, the condition is not getting better. So the main pressure on uh, water quality are agriculture, uh, drainage, forestry, and discharges from urban wastewater. Uh, this leads to runoff of nutrients, sediments, pesticides, uh, as well as damage to the physical habitats of waters. Uh, the number on the good news, because we, we all need some good news, I think, in these days, the numbers of waters impacted by urban waste water discharges is reducing. And we're seeing the trajectory going in the right direction there. It's still higher than we would like, but there are improvements. And that has been a very uh, there's been very significant investment in the last number of years in urban waste water. Um, however, the number of waters impacted by agriculture has actually increased in the last number of years. So as it currently stands, Ireland will fail to meet our goal of restoring all waters to good quality by 2027. And by the way, we also failed in that target for 2021 and for 2015. So we keep setting targets, uh, but we're not putting in place the actions in order to deliver. So there's an awful lot of work that needs to happen to pr better protect our water environment. We're also seeing ongoing declines in our biodiversity with the main pressures on uh, Ireland's protected habitats being agriculture and other land uses such as extraction of resources, minerals, peat, uh, as well as forestry, urbanisation and invasive species. And the MPWS reported in 2019 that 85% of our habitats are in uh, unfavourable status, uh, with 46% demonstrating ongoing declines. 15% of protected species are suffering also from ongoing declines. But, again, on the good news, uh, a, over half of EU-listed species were assessed favourably, indicating that action is being taken to make a difference. So we now need uh, to take action to protect and enhance biodiversity, and that can also have climate benefits. For example, there's a lot of work happening now with regard to rehabilitation of peatlands, um, and protecting these environments also has a climate benefit. So... Then, just briefly talking about chemicals, um, our waters also tell us what's happening with regard to chemicals in our environment, and we're seeing both from our drinking water report and also our water quality report that there are issues with regard to chemicals. 31 supplies failed the pesticide standard in 2021, which means pesticides are getting into our drinking waters. 
And we're also seeing the persistence of substance in, substances in the environment long after their use has ceased. So, for example, PCBs, mercury, examples of these ubiquitous substances that are still in our environment. So it is really important to know that we need to take action now to prevent those chemicals getting into the environment because once they're in the environment, they stay there um, and it is much more difficult to address them. On air quality, uh, this I think people really get, the interconnection between our air quality and our health. We know that in Ireland it's estimated that there's 1,300 premature deaths every year because of poor air quality. And again, in a few months ago, September 2021, we published our air quality report. And that showed the fine particulate matter mainly from burning solid fuels in our homes and nitro di nitrogen dioxide from transport is impacting air quality. Now, overall in Ireland, we are blessed. Our air quality is, is good overall. Uh, partly that's luck because of our positioning, um, but also because we aren't a heavy industrialized country. But we are seeing that there's areas where localized air quality is having an impact on people. So while we met all of our EU requirements with regard to air quality, we have not met the new and more stringent health-based World Health Organization guidelines. And what we're seeing is a number of stations not meeting those guidelines for particulates, for NOx, for ozone, and for sulfur dioxide. So we've been calling for uh, Ireland and Europe to adopt these much more stringent guidelines. It will be a challenge, but if we're truly seriously serious about protecting our health, then we need to be adopting those guidelines for air quality. What it means is that more action will be needed by all of us in our choices and how we heat our homes and heat, heat our buildings um, and also how we, how we travel and making more sustainable travel choices. And it, looking at, to radon very briefly, because when we kind of are talking about retrofitting our homes um, and making our, our homes more energy efficient, uh, we then turn our eyes to indoor air quality. And we know that uh, the types of fuels we use in our home impact indoor air quality and our health. Uh, but also when we're retrofitting and we're, we're improving our homes, we need to be conscious that radon can have an impact. Um, and we need to make sure that we reduce the level of indoor pollutants through smart design and ventilation. And we published back in May the radon maps, new upgraded made radon maps for Ireland. It was such a hit. We've never had such a hit on our website. The website ended up going down. And I was kind of saying, oh, my God, what, you know, what's the issue here? Our website isn't fit for purpose. And then the team told me the number of hits, which was far exceeded anything that it ever had, uh, we'd had on the website. And it shows the level of interest people have on in radon. Now we need to translate that interest to testing and when the levels are high for remediation, which is simple and straightforward. But it's back to, it's not air quality outside our, our houses and our, our, our workplaces, it's inside as well. So kind of maybe coming towards, a, towards an end, uh, it's all interconnected. And this is what we, what one of the messages that we, we've tried to get out and get out in the context of our State of the Environment report in that when you look at all of these environmental challenges, they are all connected. Um, and in our State of the Environment report in 2020, we've been advocating and have been advocating since for a national policy position on the environment that brings all of these challenges together and sets Ireland's level of ambition in the short, medium and long term. What type of environment do we want to leave to the next generation and how do we address that? And this is something that should cut across politics, it should cut across sectors, and it is about us as a country setting that level of ambition. And where you would end up is something along the lines of environment in all policies, similar to the very successful One Health and Health in All Policies approach. And we should have this national policy, but also we need to recognise that we've lots of plans and programmes that, if we're currently implemented, 
would improve our environment and resolve many persistent environmental issues and deliver uh, co-benefits. So back to this, this issue of we have the plans and programmes, but they need to be implemented and they need to be actioned in order to address issues. So, uh, and this is something that I think the EU have called out Ireland um, again and again. Uh, we describe it as being a good midwife but a poor mother uh, in the context of the health audience here uh, to, to link it. Uh, but yet yeah, we come up with the ideas but actually then driving the implementation. So whether that's in climate or whether it's on water or whether it's on air, we need to drive that implementation. So just maybe in conclusion, um, and kind of in that, that call for action and saying all of us have a role in driving the implementation and, and highlighting the importance of health and the environment for everybody, I really do want to kind of, I suppose, end and saying, look at what we have. And we are so blessed in Ireland to have uh, an environment that others would envy with all of our challenges others would still envy the quality of environment that we have. And it is a treasure. It is an asset that is fundamental to our health. And uh, I suppose we're, many of us are trying to kind of forget about the dark days of COVID um, and when we were restricted to two kilometres and five kilometres. But one of the key learnings during that time was how beneficial our local environment was to our, our health and well-being. So our physical health and people really reconnecting with their local environment, but also in our mental health at a time of huge stress the people found great solace in the environment. So it's to continue to recognise that and to continue to recognise the importance of positive engagement with our environment. So with that, I'm going to thank you and I look forward to uh, the rest of the day. Thank you very much.